Hello everyone! In this optimization, scientific computing and Python programming tutorial, we will learn number 1. How to automatically compute gradients of multivariable functions in Python by using Python's symbolic computation library called SymPy. Number 2. How to automatically generate Python functions and how to automatically generate Python scripts that will return the gradient values for given input vectors. The programming techniques that you will learn in this video tutorial are very important for the development of optimization, control, and signal processing algorithms. For example, you can use the techniques presented in this video tutorial to implement advanced optimization methods and to automatically define and implement the cost functions and gradients. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this video tutorial, as well as more than 400 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start. Here's a brief outline of this lecture. First of all, we will provide a brief summary of gradients of nonlinear and multivariable functions. Then, we will explain on the first test case how to compute the gradients in Python. And here is the Python script. Here is the example that we will consider. Then, we will consider a more complex example shown over here and we will develop a Python script that will automatically compute the gradient of this function. Before we explain how to compute the gradients in Python, it is first important to briefly summarize and revise the concept of gradients of multivariable functions. First, let us consider this function. Over here, x and y are scalar-independent variables, and f of x and y is the multivariable functions of the two input arguments x and y. Keep in mind that f of x and y is the scalar function. This function is shown over here. Over here are the y values and over here are the x values. On the vertical axis we add the f of x and y values. That is, for any point over here in this plane, x and y, we compute the value of f of x and y and we put it on the vertical axis and we obtain a point. By doing this, for all the points inside of this grid, we, we obtain this parabolic function. In the general case, the gradient of a multivariable function of two variables is a vector defined by this equation. We call this vector g of x and y and it's equal to nabla of f of x and y and it's a vector with components. The first component is the partial derivative of our f function with respect to x and the second component or the second entry is the partial derivative of f with respect to y. This symbol, called nabla, is the mathematical symbol for the gradient. Next, let us apply this definition to our original function shown over here. The partial derivative of our function with respect to x is obviously 2 multiplying x minus 2. The partial derivative of f with respect to y is 2 multiplying y minus 2. Next. Let us compute the gradient at the point x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 10. The gradient at this point is equal to, by substituting the values, over here x is equal to 10, y is equal to 10, we substitute the values over here and we obtain 16, 16. This gradient vector is shown in this figure. We start the arrow from the point 10 and 10 at which we evaluate the gradient and we draw the vector where the x projection of this vector is equal to 16 and the y projection of this vector is equal to 16. And here's the vector. This is our gradient. Notice that this gradient lives in the plane x and y. 
Next, let us generalize the gradient definition. In the general case, when the function f depends on the n variables x1, x2, until xn, that is, f is denoted like this, the gradient of the function f is the n-dimensional vector defined like this. The first entry is the partial derivative of f with respect to x1, the second entry is the partial derivative of f with respect to x2, and the last entry, that is the nth entry, is the partial derivative of f with respect to xn. Keep in mind, the gradient is the n-dimensional vector, and the original function is a scalar function. Okay, let's start with implementation. Here is the first example. Here is our function f, and here is the analytical gradient. Let us now write the Python script that will automatically compute this gradient. The first step, as always, is to import the necessary libraries. First, we need the NumPy library. Consequently, we type import NumPy as np. Then, we will import the symbolic Python's library called SymPy. Then, we will type this from SymPy import everything. And the symbol for everything in Python is star. Next, I will call this function called init printing, and this function will be used to generate nice plots and nice descriptions of symbolic expressions. You will see that later on. Okay, let us analyze this problem. We have two independent variables, x1 and x2. And consequently, the first step is to define a vector of symbolic variables. So I will type this. x is equal to matrix symbol. And over here, the symbol is x. And it will be a vector with two rows and a single column. That is, I'm assuming the following. I'm assuming that this vector x is a symbolic variable that looks like this, x1 and x2. However, you should keep in mind that Python actually starts the indices from 0. Consequently, this vector will look like this, x of 0 and x of 1. Keep in mind that. Okay, let us evaluate the script and let's see the output. Here's our vector x. Let's see what is x of 0. x of 0 is x, 0, 0. And let's see x of 1. Perfect. x, 1, 0. This is very important to keep in mind. The next step is to define this function. Let's do that. I will type this. f is equal to matrix. And over here, the matrix will have only a single entry, and this entry will be the symbolic description of this cost function. So let's do that. Let's type x1 minus 2 squared. Note that we need to start from 0, since x0 is actually x1, minus 2, double star 2. This is the second power of this expression, that is, square. In the same manner, let's define this term. We need to type x of 1 minus 2 squared, and that's it. Let's see our function f. Here it is. Perfect. That's exactly this function f. Now, let's compute the gradient. To compute the gradients, we will be using the SymPy function called Jacobian. Because Jacobian of a scalar function is actually a gradient. So we will type g is equal to f dot Jacobian. And over here, we will specify the symbolic vector x. This means that we are computing the Jacobian with respect to the symbolic vector x, or better to say, with the components, with respect to the components of the symbolic vector x. Okay, let's do that, and let's see the output. 
here is g. Aha! Uh -huh. 2x1 minus 4 and 2x2 minus 4. Perfect. However, we see one problem over here. The gradient is actually a row vector. However, we define gradients as column vectors. To do that, we will simply do the following. We will type g is equal to g transpose. And that's it. This will transpose our original g. Let us now look into the g. Here it is. Perfect. G now is actually in the form of the column vector, and this is in accordance with our definition. Okay, this is nice. Now we have the symbolic expression for F and the symbolic expression for G. However, if we want to implement an optimization algorithm, we would actually like to have a function that will take as an input the vector X and that will produce the gradient at the corresponding vector x. So how to write this function? The automatic approach for writing this function is to use the SymPy function lambdaphy. Here's what we will do. I'm creating now a function called gradient function and this function is actually created by the SymPy function called lambdaphy. The first input of the lambdaphy is our symbolic vector x and the second input or the second input argument is the symbolic expression for our gradient. So what's happening over here? Lambdaphy will create a function out of our symbolic expression given by g. This function will accept the argument x and it will substitute the numerical values for x0,0 0, 0 and x1,0. Okay, so let's evaluate this expression and let's see what is gradient function. Okay, we can see that it's actually a Python function. Perfect. Now, let's create a test case. For example, x value is equal to a numpy array with following entries 10 10 let's see this vector here it is now let's see what will happen if we type this gradient value is equal to and here's the magic and here's the power of Python we can now use gradient function and we can simply specify the x value over here and let's see the output aha uh -huh, the output is 16 16 and let's look into the gradient if you substitute 10 over here it's 2 times 10 20 minus 4 that's exactly 16 and if you substitute 10 over here it's 2 times 10 minus 4 that's 16 consequently we automatically created a function that computes the gradients. Next, let us consider a more complex case. Here's the new function f, and here's the gradient of that function. The new function contains four independent variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4, and consequently, the gradient will be a four-dimensional vector. First, let us clear the workspace and let's import the necessary libraries. We need NumPy, then we need to import the SymPy library. We're importing everything, all the functions and packages, and we called we call the function init printing for generating nice prints of our symbolic expressions. Next, we need to define the symbolic vector x. Let's analyze the problem. The vector x should actually contain foreign entries. x1, let me just write it nicely, x1, x2, x3, and x4. Consequently, we need to type this. 
x is matrix symbol x and the dimensions are 4, 1. Next, let's define our nonlinear function. f is equal to matrix and the matrix should contain only a single entry and that's precisely our nonlinear function. So we type x of 0, that's actually x1, multiplying x of 1, that's actually x2, plus sine of x2, and that's x3, then we have plus x1, that's actually x2, multiplying e, note over here that SimPy uses the capital E to write the exponential e, and we need to write the exponential, the exponential is obviously x3, that corresponds to x4. Let's see our function f. Here it is. This term over here is the first one, then we have the sine term, and finally we have x1 multiplying x2. Next, let's compute the gradient. Again, g is equal to f, Jacobian, and the variable is x. And here I should be careful. I should not create errors. So here is g. And let's transpose this result. g is equal to g transpose. And this is the final expression for our gradients. Let's verify that everything is computed correctly. x1, 0, is actually x2. This term is obviously correct. This term is correct. And this term is correct. Perfect. Next, let us create a function that will return the value of our gradient for the given value of the vector x. So we need to use lambdify. Let's call the, func the function gradient function is equal to lambda phi. The first argument is the variable that's used for computing the gradient or actually for creating the function and the second variable is the symbolic expression. In our case it's g. Here's our gradient function. Let's create a test case I call it test case vector is the numpy array and over here you should be very careful the dimensions of this vector should actually correspond to dimensions of our symbolic vector the symbolic vector is 4 by 1 matrix consequently over here we need to define a 4 by 1 matrix and let's substitute, substitute the values for example 1 1 and 1 and finally, let's call this gradient function with the input argument equal to test case vector. And let's store the result in the gradient numerical. And let's see the output. Here it is. Perfect. That's it. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you liked this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.